easy to assume when we open our eyes and see the world that what we see is somehow an accurate reflection of what's actually there. But this is very far from the truth. The brain is faced by this noisy and ambiguous flood of sensory information and what we perceive is simply the brain's best guess of what might be out there in the world and the visual brain. The visual brain has all these shortcuts, all these strategies to generate a coherent visual experience from this ambiguous and noisy sensory information. So this is a great example of how the brain all the time generates the conscious visual experiences that we have. This is called the Adelson checkerboard. And what's going on here is that we have a grid of grey and white squares and there's a shadow being cast. Now if you look at the two squares A and B, they will seem to you to be different shades of grey. Certainly that's how they seem to me. But they are in fact exactly the same shade of grey. And I can prove that to you by taking away half the image so that uh, we lose the cylinder that casts a shadow and even more convincingly by painting grey lines of the same shade across the image. Now you can really see that it's the very same shade of grey. But if we go back to the first image, still they look different. Now what's going on here? What's happening is the brain knows what happens when shadows pass over things. So the brain knows that for something to look a bit darker, in shade, probably it's actually a little bit lighter. So that's why you see the bottom square as lighter, because the brain unconsciously controls for the effects of shadow. That's why you see it as lighter than the other square. And this is actually a very useful thing for the brain to do, because if things change their appearance as clouds passed across the sky always, then it would be a very confusing visual world. And our brain solves these problems automatically for us, so that as we walk around and as lighting conditions change, things still look the same to us. And this is a brilliant achievement of the brain. So of course the real important question here is what colour is that dress? Is it blue and black? Is it white and gold? It's actually blue and black. But the really interesting thing here is that people see it differently. And it, something similar is going on here to what's happening in the Adelson checkerboard, which is that the colours that we see depend on the context of the light in which we see surfaces. So if you see the dresses as blue and black, what's happening is the brain is assuming that the lighting around it is, is sort of yellowish and, and whitish, like indoor lighting, and it's, it's discounting that, it's taking that lighting out, so you see it as blue and black. If you see it as white and gold, the brain is assuming that it's a different kind of lighting, in this case a bluish light, like on a, on a summer's day in a, a blue sky. What's fascinating about this is that while psychologists have known about this process for a very long time, it's called colour constancy, we've never before found an example where different people see the same image and apply the principles of colour constancy so differently. And again, this is not something that you think about, it's something the brain does automatically to generate our perception of the world. And it just goes to show that we all inhabit different worlds.